Hello and welcome to the fourth video in this series where we are going to be building a Skype clone in Flutter. In the previous video, I briefly demonstrated how to get started with Firebase and implemented Google sign in and retrieve the user details to save it into our Firestore database. In this video, we're going to start off with some layouts. But so far, our app just has two screens a login screen and this home screen. So I'm going to sign out of my account in order to see the login screen. So let me just make a method quickly to sign out of my account. So I'll go to methods.dart and I'll create a function of type future void and name it sign out. Then I'll mark it as sync and to sign out we just need to call a couple of functions. First I'll disconnect the Google account then we sign out of the Google account and then at the end I'll simply return auth dot sign out to successfully sign out of the auth instance and the reason why we made this sign out function as a future is because we needed a way to track whether a user has been successfully signed out or not and if he is then we can use the then callback to perform some action after the user signs out you'll see that in the future videos now i'll create the same method in the repository as well after that i'll come back to main.dart and I'll simply write repository dot sign out. Now, as soon as I hot restart the app, I'm signed out of my account. And don't forget to remove this line, otherwise you will be forever signed out. Now, we want this login button to be in center. So I'll go back to login screen and I'll wrap the login button function with the center widget. If you look at the finished version, you can see a bit of shimmer effect on the button. So I'll go to popspec.yaml and import the shimmer limit and import the shimmer library. By the way, I've made a complete tutorial on this where I built a slide to unlock screen, applied shimmer on image and created a loading screen. So if you're interested, make sure to check that out as well. Now, there are gonna be several variables and values which we will require at various places in our app. So in order to deal with that, I'll just create a file called universal variables inside of the utilities folder and just paste this content. You can get the content directly from the repository mentioned in the description of the video. Coming back to login screen, I have imported the shimmer.dart file and now I will wrap this flat button with a widget called shimmer.fromColors. And then it needs a base color, which is going to be white. And then for the highlight color, I'll write universal variables and it imports the necessary file so that we can access the desired class and then we want the sender color. We also need to change the background of the page. So I'm going to set the background color property of scaffold widget to universal variables dot black color. I'm also going to give some border radius to this button using shape, rounded rectangle border, border radius, border radius dot circular 10. Great. Now I'll hot restart the app and there we go. If you remember when you press the login button, it takes some time for us to move from login button to home screen. And while that happens, it would be great if we could show a circular progress indicator so that user continuously receives a visual feedback. So at top of this class, I'll create a Boolean variable named isLoginPressed and set it to false. Then I'm going to wrap the center widget with a stack and just below it, we're going to show a circular progress indicator if isLoginPressed is true or else we'll just show a container. Now we need to change the value of this variable as soon as login button is pressed. So I'll come inside of this perform login function and I'll write set state is login pressed true. After that, we'll go to authenticate user and once the user has been authenticated, we'll just send him to the next screen. So he'll no longer be able to see the circular progress indicator. Therefore, you don't really need to set is login pressed to false, but we'll do it anyways just to be safe sided. So I'm gonna come inside of this then callback of authenticate user function and I'll write set state is login pressed false. Now let's hot restart it again. We have a cool animation and once I click on this login button and select my account, there we go. It shows the circular progress indicator and then takes us to the next screen. Now let's start working on the layout of this app. First, I'm gonna convert this stateless widget to a stateful widget. Then I'm going to set the background color for scaffold to universal variables dot black color. Now we're going to need a page view. So what is a page view? Well, by definition, page view is a widget which creates a scrollable list that works page by page 
from an explicit list of widgets. In simple words, it maps a list of widgets into multiple pages and you could actually slide through those pages. So for the body of the scaffold, I'll write page view and then to this page view, we'll provide a list of widgets that we want to map into pages. For now, I'll just provide text for every single page. For the first page, the text will be chat list screen. For the second one, it would be call logs. And for the third one, it would be contact screen. We're also going to need a page controller. So I'll write controller, page controller. And then up here, I'll create a variable of type page controller. Then I'll override the init state method and initialize the page controller just like that. We're also going to need an integer value which keeps track of the current page number. So I'll write int page equals zero. Now I'm going to scroll to page view widget and we can actually trigger some action as the page changes using on page changed callback. And this callback returns with current page number. So I'll create a function named on page changed and it accepts an integer value. Then I'm going to call set state and set current page value to the page value that we receive from the callback. So this on page changed is called by the widget itself when the page is changed. So now we are going to need a way to actually change the page. Then I'll write bottom navigation bar and for the bottom navigation bar, I'll just have a container. Then I'll pass padding as a child, set padding, edge and sits, dot symmetric, vertical 10. Then this time we're going to be using something called Cupertino tab bar. So make sure that you have the Cupertino.dart package as well. Then for the background color of this tab bar, I'll just write universal variables dot black color so that it matches with the black color of this scaffold. Then this Cupertino tab bar requires a list of items of type bottom navigation bar item. So I'll write items and the first item is going to be bottom navigation bar item icon icon icons dot chat. Then we want the selected icons to be blue in color, whereas all the non-selected icons to be gray in color. So for the color, I'll write color underscore page equal equal zero question mark universal variables dot light blue color else universal variable dot gray color. Then for the title, I'll write text chats style text style font size and we're going to be having multiple bottom navigation bar items. So I'll just create a double variable over here named label font size and set it to 10. Then for the color, I'll just do the same thing which we did with the icon. I'll write underscore page equal equal zero question mark universal variables dot light blue color or else colon colors dot gray. Then I'll just copy and paste this two more times and change this from icons dot chat to icons dot call. And for the third one, I'll change it to icons dot contact phone. And we're going to also need to change the value of page which we are comparing with. So for the second tab, I'll write one and for the third tab, I'll write two. I hope you're getting this logic. When the first page is selected, the value of page variable is zero. Then as you move on to the next page, the value of page variable changes and according to it, the icons and the text also change colors. After doing all this, I'm going to use the on tap callback to call this function. And I'm going to pass the current page value to current index. Great. Now we just need to make navigation tapped function. So I'll create a function up top and name it navigation tapped. And this receives the index value of the tab, which is tapped. So we can use a page controller to jump to a specific page using jump to page function. And we'll pass in the page value. Great. So now I'm going to hot restart the app once again and see how it all works. All right. So as you can see that I'm already logged into my account and now I'm going to slide this page view and there we go. This works. And if I tap on the icons, this also triggers the desired action. Although since we are cloning Skype and Skype does not support this sliding page view, so we're going to have to do the same as well. And it's pretty simple. Just come over to the page view widget and set the physics property to never scrollable scroll physics. That's it. Now I'm going to reload it once again and there we go. Now you can only switch through these pages by tapping on any one of these icons. All right. So that's it for this video. In the next video of this series, I'm going to start off by making the layout of our chat list screen. The code for this video is present in the part 4 branch of the Skype clone repository. You can find it linked in the description below. And if you enjoyed the video, then don't forget to leave a like or comment. And if you're new, then please consider subscribing to the channel to receive amazing updates on Flutter. So till next time.